After sitting down with Lil Troy on the Throat in the Game podcast, I start to think about the history of the beat between he and both Pimp C and Scarface. Like he said, he was the first to sign Scarface as DJ Action before Jay Prince brought him to rap a lot. And Troy's story checked out the same that Lil J told the story in his book to all the signs of respect. But where they went left from now, we don't really know. From what the streets say, Latroy was a real hustler, a big time hustler on the South Side back in the 80s and early 90s and parlayed that hustle into a music hustle, perhaps in an effort to legitimize his money, similar to the path that Eazy took. After doing his bid and getting out in 2001, he said this in an MTV interview, I walked the walk, talked the talk, and got caught up in what I believe in. I had to go pay my debt to society. Now that I paid my debt, I'm back to balling. Scarface was always really skilled at rapping and was a nickel and dime hustler from what he says himself. How much was you making at your most when you were selling crap with the day? Maybe a week. I don't know. <laughs> Two thousand, if that. Yeah. You know, we were buying beaver, we were paying beaver bills and buying tennis shoes. We weren't really trying to get mm-hmm. fucking black mafia. Um yeah. BMF, we were BMF level, goddamn. We was two little niggas trying to get some money. So was it easy? What it went wrong, we really don't know. But in Scarface music, it was a common thread to mention Lil Troy directly or indirectly. Right here, the truth reveal. Troy, you a mouse? Yeah, you rapping, but the homie Lil Pots can't get out. Real, I got the documents to prove that you sketching ass nigga trying to hide behind your music. Troy then said this in a clip that he had paperwork on Scarface. You want to take a Scarface beef about the DVD, paperwork? Everything started from this here. You see this here? This is paperwork DVD. This is what they didn't want y'all to see at first. But now y'all gonna see it all over again because Pimp C want to talk about it, take up a Scarface about the DVD. If Scarface on a four page affidavit introducing laws to his to the nigga as his cocaine supplier, he working with the folks. I ain't no real fan said nothing but about it. So you need to check out the motherfucking DVD. See the fuck I'm talking about on this motherfucker right there. Cause Scarface is on a four page affidavit in the deep inside, all right? Inside, you're gonna get a four page affidavit uh, of every Scarface name in there. When you see him, you gotta ask for an autograph or something, alright? But back to that motherfucking whole ass nigga, Pimp C, run his goddamn mouth. And when it comes to the beef between him and Pimp C, RIP, we not sure either. But of course, he dropped this records too. The most popular one was The Massacre from his post homers album, The Naked Soul of Sweet Jones. GK also made a song called The Game Been Good to Me, where in the first verse, Pimp C describes a situation that sounds similar to what happened to Lil Troy but clarifies at the end of the verse that he wasn't dissing nobody, no particular name, but if the shoe fits wet. But back in the gap, Lil Troy felt like Pimp C was out of his jurisdiction speaking of what him and Scarface had going on, given their history. Troy attributed his attack from Pimp C was based off of him and Face being label mates and Pimp having a larger voice at the time than Scarface. Nigga, we let you in, now you wanna try to talk shit? Well, now it's time for OG to put you in your fucking place, nigga. I wanna try to take up Scarface beef. Nigga, that was between me and motherfucking Scarface. Nah, it's your time. But then, when I holler at JJ, say, man, it ain't no more wax, man. We just doing this on wax, man. It ain't nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? We just trying to sell records. Yeah. I'm like, that's all it is about selling records. But then you get the people in the neighborhood start believing what they say, like they, they're a prayer book or something, you know what I'm saying? And then... Well, Pimp, you never really knew why he was... I don't know why he even started... I know Pimp when them... I, see, look. I know Pimp them from Port Arthur. I used to hustle in Port Arthur. Yeah. I know them, been knowing them for him. I've been knowing them since every young. I know them. Which to a degree makes sense because Troy went to jail towards the end of 99. Massacre came out in 2010. I understand the codes of the streets, and even though the song was entertaining, but 11 years later, when Troy was so far removed from music and to still be talking about it, kind of raises a question mark. Kind of necessary, in my opinion. Now, G Code, on the other hand, by Scarface, 
came out in 2005, still in the era kind of sort of somewhat a little Troy, so that's more understandable. But if you look back at it, we don't know who was lying and who was telling the truth. But the facts are that Detroit did go to prison. Scarface was one signed to him. They did sue each other back and forth. Because Detroit was sued first for 200000 over a Scarface verse on his Back to Ballin' album. And Rapper Lot did release a post homage release of Pimp C going in on Detroit. But here it is, 2020. Latroy said that him and Scarface have a better relationship and they talk on a regular basis now. People tend to forget that at the end of the day it is entertainment that we are buying into. And we are just fans. When we listen to the songs and all three of them have contributed to Houston culture in various ways. And all of them, all three of them, deserve some respect. Say what you want. It's H time on mine. It's Hype South with Child Time TV. Until next time, peace.